Stefano Viglietti of Stefano's Trattoria and the cadre of his other restaurants in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, is, as far as I'm concerned, an American treasure, a state treasure, an Italian cooking treasure. This is the first interview I've done with him for this series, and to be candid, I waited. I wanted to be ready. I wanted to be able to honor everything, his contributions, to what he does for American cuisine, for Italian cuisine, and for his people here in this region of the country. It's Chef Talk with Kyle Cherick and the esteemed chef, Stefano Viglietti. Yeah, silver would be great. So you, this is the, the Abruzzo These cheese. These are three of the raw sheep's milk cheeses which took me to Italy. And the Recently, I, you've been just, a bunch of went, times. Went, yeah, exactly. This was like, uh, this was our 50, we went over the 50 count on taking staff on this trip. I hadn't been in like six years with staff. But we decided to do it again. 50 people of your staff 50 people have gone you to took Italy. to Italy. Yeah, since 1994. Yeah. It's you incredible. could you could build you could have built two more restaurants with the money that you've invested in your people True. in trips to Italy. True. But had I done that I wouldn't have Joe, our chef who's been here twenty years, Chad who's been here eighteen years, Mike and Joseph who've been here eighteen and nineteen years respectively. Yeah. Um, we, we found early on if you want good people to stay around, you've gotta keep teaching, learning, showing, keeping people curious. If people get bored they'll they'll jump at the next nickel or dime to go somewhere. You have to really keep people learning and feeling involved and engaged. Because you've cultivated the the staff, all the ones, the names you just named, and you've kept them here, like you you've cultivated them, you taught them, and you've taken them to Italy. And the substance of chefs is usually you're training them to leave, mm -hmm. and then they go yeah. open their own place. Right. But you just named off six names that haven't done that, which exactly. is not the norm. Exactly. In the industry, yeah, usually that would be five names, and then somebody got hit by a car. Right. And that's very typical. But I think that here's a little different, different pace. You know, it's a, it's a nice, people actually want to live here. It's a place to stay and raise a family. That's a part of it too, I think, is that you do tend to settle down here as well. Mm. Whereas if you're in a, in a Portland or a New York or a Philly or one of these highly competitive markets, then maybe you're jumping around before you go off and whatever, settle down, build a fence, buy the house. Whereas here, this can actually be that place. And I think if you just, you know, we've, we've, we've fought to do simple IRA, we've fought to do insurance, we've fought to do things that are out of the ordinary for small restaurants. Yeah. Because I, we both realized early on, you can write a check to Uncle Sam, or you can give it to your staff. So we chose to travel, educate, teach, all that kind of thing, and, and, and ex give people experience, sensitive experiences, to better their existence. And it seems to have worked. Let's talk about this farm to table thing, because I always saw you as a chef that, was, that got it beforehand, and then you rode the trend in a good way, mm -hmm. not, not in sure. a cliche, but you yep. grabbed hold of it because you were doing it anyway. And now it's been, well, your thoughts? Abused? <laughs> I've tended to be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. And I let it come through this. I mean, I was walking through the dining room, I don't know, about a month ago in the middle of summer, and some guy who looked like a guy who would not wax poetic about wild arugula, right? He was actually a steakhouse owner. Big, beefy guy. Look the part. Look the part. Flags me down and says, why is this so damn good? It was having carpaccio. And I said, well, I mean, local beef and wild arugula. And he goes, what, what, what's the arugula? I said, it's called salvatica, salvata. And he just, he just couldn't, he's like, gosh, I mean, when, when, a, when a, a simple salad green will stop a person in their tracks, that's what it's about. Now, I know that everyone's talking about it, and it's all farm to table, and Schlegel family this, and all that, all over Chicago, it's all the same kind of, you know. Yep. It's everywhere, and it's, I just, I found that here, if you did that, people just went, shut up. We've been doing this forever. Yeah. What are you talking about? So we just tried to make really good food, let that kind of thing happen where a person is stopped in their tracks by a flavor and is forced to say, why is this so good? Then they're coming back. Right. Not because, oh, he uses farm to table. He uses local products. You know, it's chatter, chatter, chatter. What, what cuisine, cooking, gets you off other than Italian? I love, well, I cook a lot of Asian at home. Do you? Yeah, I make a mean, mean kimchi stew. I make my own udon noodles, which I walk on in my kitchen. That's how you need them. You actually walk on them a little bit. Just all the Asian cultures, the, the flavors, the brightness of it, the heat, the fact that I, to me, 
food should always have a little pain in it too, not just all pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, just like food should have acidity. So it's very Catholic tannins. of you. That's right, little yeah. little punishment. Yeah. You know, but it's but it's, it's it's just like a salad that has bitter and salty and sweet yeah. and tan and sour. All of those things that you should have in a meal, the Asians do that very very well. Yeah. Some of the other European cuisines fascinate me a little bit. I like German food actually. I I, I find German bread to be the best in all of Europe. Hmm. You know, seven their their breads. I think I lived in Freiburg and, and during school. You may be and, stabbed uh, to death by was, a Frenchman oh, with a batard man. for saying that. Just so you know. I would. That's I'll I will I will have that discussion with the French. They have great bread, but the variety of the German bread. You know, I like it all, but like you say, you learn no matter where you are. If I go to Chicago for a weekend, I learn. Right. Even if it's something that you have that isn't perfect, you want to rush home, like I did the night with my squash dish, which I hope to show you in a little bit, and then want to make it better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And make it my own. Yeah. And so, yeah, you take it, you get an idea, you get inspired, and you, make, you change it up. You know? It's, it's, everything that goes in, like you say, just goes in and, and changes it all. And every, like you say, every experience, by, law, by, by definition, changes you.